The American Symphony Orchestra was founded in 1962 by Leopold Sarkovsky, uh, who actually had the idea of creating a second orchestra for New York, uh, particularly when the New York Philharmonic moved to Lincoln Center, which was new in the early 60s. And uh, he thought of the orchestra as a resident orchestra at Carnegie Hall, where we are now. And uh, his original idea was to bring young American musicians. Stokowski thought a new kind of orchestra was needed, and of young American musicians that also did a lot of contemporary music, did some unusual repertory, and had cheap seats. So it could be more democratic, more people could come and hear concerts. So what New York needs, in fact, all of classical music needs, is to open up the um, tremendous treasures in the history of music. So those of us who are musicians who are primarily performing works written in the past, the 20th century, the 19th century, the 18th century, need to understand that we're curators of a museum where we're showing to the public out of 150 potential rooms, only three. So we are actually cheating the public out of the riches of the musical experience. We're playing the same concertos over and over, the same symphonies over and over again, the same oratorios. Every Christmas is the Messiah. Every Easter is maybe the St. Matthew Passion or the St. John Passion, and that's it. The entire oratorial literature is gone. With the exception of the Fauré Requiem, uh, the Brahms Requiem, the Mozart Requiem, the Verdi Requiem, the Messiah, then it gets sort of hazy. Um, and uh, the same is true in the symphonic repertory. So one mission we took on in the 90s was to open up the range of great music, classical music. For example, we're preparing for a festival of the music of Carlos Chavez, the Mexican composer. And uh, in researching it, I came across a fabulous early symphony by a Mexican composer, Julian Carrillo, who is famous for microtonal music. But he wrote a beautiful romantic symphony, which he never played. So, for example, I just did a concert in New York, um, which was called Requiem for the 20th Century. I wanted to look at how composers reacted to the tremendous violence of the 20th century. World War I, World War II, and the disjunction between technological progress, you know, computers, airplanes, and barbarism. Now, how do they connect it? The basic moral question, in a way, that the 20th century raised. So I chose three pieces. One was the Ligeti Requiem, which was written by a Holocaust survivor in the 60s about how does one write modern music and still face the ethical difficulty that the killers loved beauty in the old fashioned way. How do you reconfigure beauty in a modern way that sets it apart from the realization that the old idea of beauty didn't help tame the violence and barbarism of people? The fact that people who gassed people and killed people loved Mozart and Beethoven and saw beauty in Raphael didn't stop them from doing the killing. So what's the relation between beauty and ethics? So Ligeti creates a whole new sound world using the traditional Requiem text. Then I did a piece by Rafe Warren Williams, British composer, written after the war, which is a reflection in a way on the sadness and brutality and harshness of the war. Grim, very powerful symphony. And that was in the shadow of the Second World War. And then I did a cantata by Alfred Schnittke called Nagasaki, which he wrote in 1958, which is a reflection on the dropping of the second bomb uh, on Japan. So these are three pieces that are thematically related and that um, we do programs of that kind all the time. So they're either biographical, they're historical, they're connected to other forms of art, uh, or they're 
connected sometimes to philosophical questions. For example, we plan a program next season about how does music, if at all, represent reality, mimesis. How does music function as, because it's a strange language in the Western tradition, how does it, does it reflect emotions, does it reflect reality? So those are the two main highlights of our programming. Unusual repertory that's great and deserves hearing and thematic programming, curating the concert so it's just not a random collection of events that someone wants to play. And they assume no matter what they play, the audience will listen.